All right, my friends, welcome to episode 302, the slightly delayed next episode in our awesome series of video game podcasts. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Twitter. Over there is Anthony, the dev at Summer Speak. Um, what can you tell us about our delay, Anthony? Uh, I, I don't know. Nothing happened. No reasons. Cool. There was nothing happened this week that would make uh, me and the company I work for go, Maybe we should just hold talking about anything, at least <laughs> until Wednesday. Well, today we are talking about a recent Nintendo Indie World Showcase that features some really cool games. Um... Does? <laughs> I, one I might be intimately familiar with. Um, very excited. Uh, my Finally today I showed my daughter the um, announcement trailer for Astroneer coming to Switch, and she was just glued to it. She's like, can I watch another one? Can I watch another one? And I found like a, a no commentary, um, like long play or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And she was just mesmerized. She's like, when can we play this game? And I'm like, well, it's on my PC. We can play it now. But it's coming to Switch at some point. I think the trailer said coming soon. Um, uh, so it actually says a specific date. We can get into that. Cool. Um, but she's very excited and wanted to, at night, uh, every night before bed, we watched more Cowbell. And she jumps on the couch with me. And tonight she wanted to jump on the couch to an Astroneer long play. And I was like... No, we're going to keep our routine, but I'm glad that you're excited. <laughs> um, but she was like, this is, like, I can just explore? Like, can we play two-player? Like, I can be one and you can be another? And can I be a, a woman and you could be a man? And can I do that mining and you can build? Like, sure. Yeah. She's she's very excited. She's planning out what she's going to yeah. do. <laughs> and, and you can tell her that uh, all of our Astroneer suits and everything are completely androgynous. We do not assign any specific genders to any of them. Awesome. So... Even better. Uh, yep. Don't. It doesn't matter for our game. Um, who knows? There might not even be people in there. They might just be pudding. <laughs> I'll, uh, maybe I won't tell her that, but definitely the non-conforming gender is uh, on our level, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But maybe not pudding. But Daddy, what's pudding? <laughs> we actually haven't even had pudding. Wow. Yeah. Making pudding is pretty cool, I'll say. I've yeah. done it a couple times. Mm. Yeah. It's actually not hard. Um, and... Well, I've yeah, I've made chocolate pudding a couple times for I want to make for us as pudding. dessert. Mm. It's easy. Welcome to our pudding podcast. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, Indie World Showcase, which I'm always excited about, and as soon as they get announced, um, everyone starts talking. Uh, Team Cherry. Uh, oh, oops. Hollow Knight sequel, which is escaping my mind right now. Silk Song. Thank you. Uh, Silk Song, which uh, wasn't here. Um, but man, I thought there were a ton of fucking great games in this thing. Yeah, I would actually say, the question is, is this one of the best indie worlds that they've done? I think so, because in the past, there have been, you know, not just like the sizzle reel, the, the, the um, montage reel, but like some of the big ones are don't appeal to me. And I know not every game needs to appeal to me, but they don't, some of them just don't seem very interesting. But this one, honestly, every single one looked really cool. And we started off with, um, I think it was Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Yep. Which, the, uh, wow. Jet Set Radio uh, almost? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it's the fact that it doesn't seem like there's going to be another Jet Set Radio, so these people just decided to make it themselves. Um, and I'm here for it. It sounds it's awesome. <laughs> sounds awesome. Visually looks great. It's on, on point for that style. The cell, super cel-shaded. Um, it, it just has the, they call it cyberfunk, the funkiness of Jet Set Radio. Um, and yeah, you're still going around big metropolis place uh and spray painting stuff tagging things rebelling i don't know i'm i'm for it and if i can't get another jet set radio i love that someone wants to do it themselves yeah i was surprised this was a 2022 game just because sometimes when there's like indie games that i haven't heard about um sometimes it's like a lot sooner than that right like fall or it's nice it's seen this once before oh really I don't know it was, yeah i don't know if it was a nintendo thing or a general just like hey this is a thing being made i saw a trailer for it at somewhere like a but this is the first time i've seen a trailer for it like uh bigger and focused on a console so yeah it was early it was sometime in 2020 when i saw it made it might have just been an announcement trailer from the team saying hey this is a thing we're making mm. uh, so and yeah a timed console exclusive on Nintendo Switch. So yeah, the, the announcement didn't say where it was coming. So clearly they've worked out a deal with Nintendo for a timed exclusive. 
So it's got a great art style to fit the Switch. It does. It as does. long as the you know the, the gameplay is tight, that's going to be great because I don't think it's going to be super resource and frame slowdown or what. But who knows? I don't think so. I think they've chosen an art style that can work well on that um, low pol- lower polygons exactly than others. Um, oh, what else was nice? Axiom Verge two. Yeah, this this is the next on our like run of show. But was it the second one in the showcase? Because that's that's a big one. I don't know. I don't know if it was the next one or not. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the order. It yeah. might have been two. That's fine. It looks um, compared to Axiom Verge. It's like the Super Nintendo. Yep. Whatever version, you know, the 16-bit versus the 8-bit. This is this this is the Super Metroid to uh, their Metroid. Exactly. It looks fucking awesome. Um, I. I have Axiom Verge, and I've never played it. But I have two friends who have, Brad and Travis. Yeah, I haven't played it either, and I think I have it on Epic. So I think it was free on Epic at one point. Oh. But yeah, uh, I haven't played it. It's just, but I've heard great things. So, I just, and I know I, that Axiom sorry, Verge 2 has come out on a couple things already. Or either it, it launched the day of this on Switch, and I may have launched on everything else that same day. Yeah, because it came out on Switch. I don't think it had been out before this announcement. No, because it was on. Oh yeah, because Axiom Verge Two was on Epic. It was on Steam. Um, maybe not Steam. Maybe only Epic. Um, and I think it's a Game Pass game as well. So oh okay. That, that Microsoft that throwing that money out. Yeah. Keep throwing. I mean, Game Pass is fucking great. Yeah, Axiom Verge is on for ten percent off on uh, Epic right now. I'm <sighs> probably gonna get on. Uh, Switch though. Since this thing, I haven't had a chance to load up the eShop because there are a couple games that we'll talk about throughout this uh, podcast that I f- I'm super excited about playing. Um, but this one is certainly one of them. There's Eastward, uh, which was a post-apocalyptic game, like a like an RP- a, a, a RPG, some dungeon mechanics. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's called an action adventure RPG with puzzle stuff. Uh, I I love the music of it. Um, I like the art. I, I like the the pixel coming art. In- a lot. Yeah, no, it's really cool pixel art. Um, music's great. It's intriguing, just the the look of it overall. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like really sharp pixel art to me. It's like it looks almost yeah. hand drawn. But it'll come out September sixteenth. Yeah, that one's that but, one's soon, uh, month away. That is very soon. Uh, this one I think has been in potentially been in a again either a, an indie world before or was at last year's like E three indie stuff going on mm-hmm. um but it's been in development for a while and chucklefish are the publishers but they're not the developer just as they were the same with stardew valley they, they were the original publisher for stardew valley a number of games um that uh i think they also did that um either themselves i think the um advance wars game that wasn't advance wars oh uh wargroove Wargroove. Yeah. I think that was Chucklefish as well. Right. It was. Um, yeah. I like the art style. I'm not sure. Yeah. It looks like a pretty um, straightforward RPG. Yeah. <clears throat> the next one on the list is the one I'm, other than Astroneer, I'm actually the most excited about. And it's some game that I had never heard of called a Toem, which is a hand drawn adventure game where you go explore and take pictures of things. It's almost like a weird take on uh, Pokemon Snap. Um, this is is a game that my daughter is going to fucking love. <laughs> yeah. Um, just running around exploring, taking pictures. She does that anyways. So that's going to be a nice leisurely game to play with her. Yeah, it looked super, super chill and relaxing. Um, love the art style, the, the 2D, 3D kind of thing going on there. Yep. Um, I think it just nails what it's trying to do. I'm really excited for it. And I think this was the first time I'd ever seen it announced. So pretty exciting probably for that team. That they get to show it off for the first time at a at a indie world. Yeah, it's interesting how uh, the one that came out last year that I'm struggling to remember, but it was in a 3D space and you went around took pictures of things and it had a very post apocalyptic vibe to it. Um, fuck, I bought it and I played it and it has two words in its title and I can't remember what it was. But it's it's interesting to see like I don't know if it's like a, a genre, but like run around taking pictures of things and getting points and you know taking pictures to yeah. complete quests or whatever um is an interesting genre there's been quite a few yeah uh, i think i think you're right i think it is a genre or it's starting to become a genre more than just a small mechanic in another genre like right. we are now getting the picture taking genre of games yeah that's um, what i'm getting at like what do you call that but yeah you're right picture taking. yeah 
I mean, it's a shooter. It's just you're not shooting. <laughs> yeah. You're shooting pictures. I mean, that's kind of what Pokemon Snap is, right? Like, you're shooting them, yeah. not, not with a gun. <laughs> not really, but you're pretty... Um, if I remember right, Pokemon Snap's on rails, though. Ah, uh, Umurangi Generation. God damn it, there we okay. go. Uh, Pokemon Snap is on rails, yes. Rails. Where this is freeform, kind of wander around the different places and line up your pictures. I mean, I also feel like this is just an expansion of uh, photo modes in games. Just True, being like, gamifying what? it, right? Yep, they're just like, people like taking pictures of the game. Um, so let's make a game out of that. So, yeah, it looks cool, and it's coming this fall. Um, I'll probably pick this one up. Yeah, I'm certainly going to do that. My daughter is going to, I think, she's going to love it. In reality, we're going to turn it on, she's going to be like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Although I thought Astroneer. she was going to love like, Astroneer, cool. and she did. Yeah. So She she yeah. asked while we were watching on the iPad, she said, can, I, can, I, can you grab me a controller so I can pretend that I'm playing? Yeah. And then we started playing. She said, okay, what button do I push to mine? I'm like, I, uh, X. <laughs> no, <laughs> fucking you're no. wrong. <laughs> um, I haven't played in months, so push one of the buttons, whatever. <laughs> and then yeah. she was just having so much fun just pretending. Uh, the next one, though, I'm looking forward to this. I've never played it, but I'm ready. Uh, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. I didn't know that it was possible to play it. Is it already out? I don't know. Is this? I couldn't tell if this is like new for the Switch or something that has already come out. Because they talk about mm-hmm. exclusive features for the Switch with this, but I couldn't I couldn't tell. I'm like, is, is Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon a thing that like already exists? Apple ex- Arcade or whatever? Yeah. Uh, I should say, I also I have got a six months free of that. So. Oh, you did? Apple Arcade? Yeah, there was through Target. Oh, that's cool. It's like an offer through, I got an email that's like, hey, you're a member, like you have a Target account thing, so here's an offer for six months free of Apple Arcade. So That kind of goes along with the Apple TV Plus that we got yeah. the six-month thing for. Yeah, I think Apple's like, hey, we're kind of uh, losing mindshare to Disney and mm-hmm. Netflix all the time, so let's uh, let's just get more people in the door. Um, I mean, it worked for me. Like, we've watched... We watched Ted Lasso. We're still watching that. There's several other movies that were trailered that we were like, we want to watch that. And then there's a couple more shows that I want to watch. And it's like, wow, there's some really good shit on this. Like, I might yeah. keep it after the six months. Like, oh, uh, well done. What was the other one on uh, Apple Plus? Uh, Schmigadoon. Yes. <laughs> Did you see that? Or No, but it has um, Keegan-Michael Key. Yes, right. Um, in it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, he's one of the And, I, and that like. just, I mean... Key and Peele stuff. Uh, if they do something, I'm like, I'm automatically at least a little interested. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I heard an interview on NPR today. Um, about Schmigadoon? About Schmigadoon and with the creator of it. Oh. And it sounded hilarious. Um, it, it, I think I already asked you before. You've seen, have not seen Ted Lasso because you don't have Apple I've Plus. I've not seen Ted Lasso either. It's so. f- you, uh, my God. <laughs> I guess uh, someone's, a tweet today, someone was like, uh, the only thing that's crazy about Ted Lasso and why it makes it science fiction is it's just about a person being nice. It's not even – that's true. But at a deeper level, it's like another take on masculinity, like like not toxic masculinity. It's just like a different kind of like viewpoint of what it's like to be a man – what is possible to be a man. Um, yeah. And at every turn where you th- like kind of expect like a sitcom like, I don't know, like manliness thing to come up, it doesn't, you know? And the one time it does – it's like deeply uncomfortable. It's like stop, stop doing that. <laughs> um, and that's part of the meta that that particular yeah. episode. Um, but that Parks and Rec is my favorite TV series of all time. But this one is like crawling up the list right now. It's so fucking. You know, you guys see out six landing and whatever else. But please watch yeah. it. <laughs> uh, okay, I can do that at some point here. Uh, um, but the internet here says Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon was announced February 2020. And then the world went to shit. So <laughs> it's we have yeah. Heard much I about saw it. that it's supposed to be for the. It's at least been announced for now Switch and PS4. Okay. So it's not exclusive to Switch. Probably meant to be out a lot sooner than it is, yeah. but uh, it's coming this winter, yep. and I will totally get that because uh, in my heart of hearts, I still love a good puzzle game and Match Three. Yeah, I was gonna say there's some you got some sort of affinity somewhere for Match Three games. Yep, <laughs> I do, and if they're done well, I really appreciate them. Yeah. Uh, and it's Shovel Knight. It's a great art. Uh, looks silly and fun. So uh, they did such a good job with that. Like I know they spent forever fulfilling their Kickstarter shit, but um, man, they really have um, franchised that fucking character. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, 
have, do we have Shovel Knight and Astroneer yet? Because <laughs> we should. You should. Because yeah. every game has Shovel Knight in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one is one that I am excited for, yes. mostly out of nostalgia, mm-hmm. but also because I love tactics. Yep. Uh, Metal Slug Tactics. Uh, the art style is just amazing. It, it looks, looks like Metal Slug. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a, like like a isometric. shined up Metal Slug. Um, uh, fucking just uh, the the small dioramas of these tactics things, you know, yeah. looks almost like Final Fantasy tactics um, dioramas, yep. or even um, Into the Breach. I, yeah, I'm I'm here for it. Um, still, this is a 2022 game. Yeah. They're showing off some stuff coming out later. I would say that. Yeah, yeah, and that surprised me because that's usually a hallmark of the like the the big indie where the indie directs are sorry, fuck the big Nintendo directs. The indie directs are more yeah. like here's a game that's coming out in two uh, yeah. or it's out now. Uh, I, I think this is still just COVID times totally. pushing some of the stuff back. Because I bet a lot of this would have wanted to be out sooner. Yeah. But it just hasn't worked that way. And, and just normal game development, I'm sure. Um, the things are just takes more time to polish. But yes, Metal Slug Tactics. Looks great. Tactics game. Therefore, it's... It's great. We, we've we gone down the list of, what, five games so far. And it's just like, I yeah. want to play that and that and that and that. Like, it's it's been bangers so far. Yep. And then you get Tetris Effect connected. On Very Switch. Cool. Very I'm cool. like, I mean, I'm sure I can play this on other things, but uh, why not have it on Switch? So, um, yeah, why not? It's Tetris Effect. It's amazing. So, have you played uh, it yet? No, I've watched a plenty of it. Oh, though. okay, great. Yeah, it's fucking amazing, great. especially in VR. <laughs> yeah, it just, I'm like, how can you keep making? How can they keep making Tetris so compelling after so long? Well, it's, it, they, you know, like that that gameplay loop is already. You don't need to do shit to it, but then yeah. they do. They add new stuff to it, and then they yeah. add, you know, like the music and immersive effect, and plus the VR of this one specifically. But then also the multiplayer, where like you join up and then you do like fucking Tetris race yep. um, against like boss rushes. Wow. Okay. You know. Uh, I love that. This is the thing they had the. Uh, was it all of you playing across the board? Four people playing over across a huge board. Yeah. Right. That was incredible. I don't. I haven't followed this because I know this was like the big Xbox thing. Tetris with the Xbox Series X. They're gonna have this Tetris Effect connected. I have Tetris Effect. I didn't think it was part of my package, but if it's coming to Switch, I assume this is also probably coming to other versions of Tetris. I would hope. Or already has, uh, and I just didn't notice. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Again, another one I'd get. Then we had Far Changing Tides, which looked really, really cool. Like. Uh, I couldn't even tell you. It was just kind of this, like, lonely game. You're in this, like, weird post-apocalyptic ship, and you're just solving puzzles to keep sailing the ocean and upgrading your ship. Uh, and by ship, to anyone listening, I'm describing it as, like, this weird cylinder thing with sails on it that you're putting up, and you're, like, you're raising and lowering the sails to keep it going. Um, it, it The thing describes it here as an emotional, meditative journey, Um and supposedly it's a series, I guess. Um, yeah, because Far Lone Sales was the first one. Um, okay. And that was, God, was was that a Nintendo or an Xbox? I don't oh, know. That's, what was Lone Sales? Oh, that's the one where you're like uh, on land, like your sail ship's on land. I see a screenshot of it now, and I know exactly what that game was. I never played it, but it was very striking. It was, Far yeah, wise. totally. Um, and this, in the same way, has a lot of that um again you over i'm like sure i'd pick this up um coming in early 2022 uh i was just another one that i was impressed with i wonder if it's i think it was the same thing with lone sales where like it looked super compelling but then i thought i probably wouldn't enjoy playing it Maybe. yeah i don't know this is probably the first one on the 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 list this is the first one on the list that like, i think looks great but it's not probably not one that i see myself playing yeah i'm feeling it's gonna be that lonely feeling I mean, it's trying for that. Like, you're alone sailing the ship in some weird world. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily for you, but it's definitely another good-looking game totally. for the Switch. Absolutely. In the standpoint. Uh, and then we get Loop Hero on Switch. Which because is why not? awesome. <laughs> yes, it makes total sense. This should have been on Switch already. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's coming in winter. Um, you Do you have this game? Yeah. I played oh, great. like 30, 30 some odd hours of it. Okay, great. So we I both know this is a great game. All but the last boss. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, and I'm sure the Switch is a great place for it. Oh, totally, man. I remember, I mean, I was, I probably played five hours of PC, and I was like, this is a Switch game. <laughs> yeah. Um, or Steam Deck eventually, who knows? <laughs> um, which, honestly, because I'm signed up to get a Steam Deck next year or whatever, I'm less likely to rebuy some indie games on Switch, except for Aston Year, <laughs> um, because I'm going to have it on my portable soon enough anyways. Yeah. But I will buy Aston Year time. Oh, you know what's funny? I sent um, the video, once it was released, to my... Uh, maybe I sent you a, a message or whatever and showed you, but uh, my friend said, wait, he works on Astroneer? I almost bought that game on PS4 yesterday. I was like, yep. He's like, god damn it, that's awesome. He was very impressed. That... <laughs> okay. So there you go. Well, that, You're it's impressive. It's funny how recognizable that Astroneer actually is to, to people in some ways. I kind of forget about that. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's huge, man. Like, I don't know. My, my daughter's not the test bed for like what the pu- oh. the public knows, but as soon as she saw it, she's like, "This is awesome!" Like the, you just you literally just saw those astroneer you know, astronauts uh, tear down the switch logo and poke their heads out. That's all you saw so far, and it was already it's awesome. True. It it has a great visual style to it. It does. I'll man. Give it that. It, like it screenshots and it shares really really well, and that's one of the reasons why I think it has had so much word of mouth and viral. Um, reach right in general over the years uh talking about viral reach boyfriend dungeon which did launch that same day and i'm gonna go in my house after this podcast and fucking buy this game because i am so excited this is out i showed the trailer to my wife and she's like i don't like any of those people you can (laughs) (laughs) hey hey you know don't judge a book by its cover she's like if i have to choose between all that i just want i'll just guess i'll just be friends with the cat (laughs) (laughs) But... Which is on on brand for my wife. So That's awesome. Uh, yeah, this is one that I, I haven't picked up yet. Um, mostly from not trying to distract myself with more games to play, but uh, it looks very cool. I was not expecting it to launch the same day. Yeah, me so, neither. I mean, we've heard about it for a while. So. so it's not it's not like it's exclusively launched on Switch that day. Like you can get it on Steam um, and other places. But uh, yeah, you get to do uh, date your weapons. So you can fight in dungeons. I assume if they like you more, they fight better. Right. I don't know. Basically it's leveling seemed, up your super, weapon. It's super weird. <laughs> it's such a weird premise. But uh, it's it's uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, right? Like weird premise. Yeah. Pretty cool game. And that's what yeah. this feels like. Although I think this is more up my alley in terms of gameplay. Doki, yes. even, even though that was still enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and I can't believe it's finally out. This game, Boyfriend Dungeon, in the works since its announcement for years at this point at yeah. least three we've been talking about it for a while on the podcast ago. yeah so uh it's i'm happy to see kit fox actually launch it uh finally that's a huge milestone to get across the finish line yeah. and get it out um again one i'd buy uh the next one i have heard of before and now i'm like oh i kind of want to get this uh necro barista mm-hmm. um talking about weird premises but <laughs> it's more of a, it is a visual novel, yeah. but it's just, you are a barista at, and having like last coffee with all these souls before they move on to what's next. Right. Um, they get, they get to have a talk basically and, and, uh, some form of coffee or tea or whatever they want before they move on. Um, what's... which I've heard about on, this came out a while ago on Steam. Right. And, it looked quirky and kind of cool, and now kind of knowing more about it, I'm into it. Could be it's fun. On my playlist on Steam, or not playlist, wish list uh, for sure on Steam. Um, yeah. What's the name of the game that came out, launched in the Game Pass, uh, where you are ferrying people? Spirit Fair. Thank you, Spirit Fair. Which is less of a visual novel and more of a you're you're ferrying it's like a management them. sim kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, you're managing kind of them, and there's some like adventurous parts to it and kind of just building your your boat up for these for these people on their last trip so it i would say spirit fair is more of a it's not a visual novel at all right it's a, it is a management sim more simish game where this necrobrista is a visual novel um curious like how many endings there are to it because that seems to be a big thing with visual novels is different endings um different any points for different characters and stories so right and this is an expanded version of the steam one so new content and uh, remastered visuals so 
again, that came out on Wednesday as well. And the next one as well, Islanders, which is a procedurally generated strategy game where you develop an island yep. and place buildings from your inventory. Uh, and I've buildings. seen someone com- compare this is less Sim City and more Tetris. More Tetris? Because you have to, it's about placement of everything, and it's not like you can move stuff after you've placed it, so it's kind of like a, oh. a puzzle-ish game of like optimizing how you're placing buildings and uh, areas down oh. to, to maximize everything on little islands. I, I This has been on Steam for a bit. Um, I honestly thought I owned it on Steam. I don't. Mm. But it's definitely one. I was like, I could own this, but I have it wishlisted. So, um, and that was out today as well. Uh this is totally up my alley. This is the type of game I'd probably just sit on my couch and chill out to. Yeah, it looks like a very chill out kind of game. Um, Garden Story is the next one, which I don't think I've seen, but it came out. It also launched that day, I believe. Um, something about restoring an island. Your main character is a grape. <laughs> I think it's you're a Concord grape. <laughs> is it a farming game? I think so. The trailers make it hard to see them. It's like uh, an adventurous type game. Like clearly, you're going out and doing combat. And oh yeah, I see that. Fight, but you're also helping on a farm as well. Like the stuff you do out in the field helps on the farm. So a bit probably rune factory ish. Oh guess, yeah, that's a good call. Harvest moon, the whole thing. So more combat and focus on combat than like Stardew Valley. Right. Because um, the Stardew Valley had like you can go into the caves and do some. Yeah, there's combat, a bunch of stuff. But this but the is like overworld. Yeah pretty minimal overall and like and strategy you you swing your weapon at things it's it, it there's not a lot of depth to the Stardew valley combat they don't because it's not trying to be that type of game um where this definitely i think wants its combat from what i can tell to have a little bit more meat to it um yeah because the the description with their the help of your friends you can take on the dangerous rot and find ways to encourage other residents to assist in efforts so yeah. Fighting the rot is a key part of the game. Um, it's cute. It's very cute looking. The frog looks awesome. Yeah. I love the frog. Um, and then actually we get, I think, the l- next big chunk where all sizzle reel, and they're not in order, because what opened the sizzle reel was Astroneer. Oh, yeah. I've heard of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that's It's been crazy. We've been working on this one for a while. Um, Can you say anything about um, that whole anything? <laughs> I don't know what to ask because I want to ask anything you can't answer. But uh, I mean, I can't say a huge amount. It's coming. We have said it's coming January. Um, it will have the entire content that every other platform has. We're not cutting content for it to be on Switch. Um, it has local multiplayer as well. Nice. That's what my daughter so, wanted to know. <laughs> uh, by local, not on the same Switch. It's not not, not split screen. Oh, even on the screen, on the TV. Oh, I see. You have to have two switches yeah, this, to do it. This is not a split screen game. Got it. It's not a split screen. On That's right. It wasn't console. when we played it. Yeah, because we played no, it. Um, can't can not. Does not work that way. That's right. Um, never from the never designed, uh, engineered to be a split screen game. Um, I weep for the PS4 if we tried to do that. Um, so no, but local multiplayer is, and you don't need an internet connection. You can actually just use Switch's local connection. Mm-hmm. So you and uh, up to a certain number of players, I don't know what we'll limit that to, um, can just use your local antennas to hook up and play games. Right. So if you don't have internet, you can play with people around you. Um, Great for cons. So um, that's coming. Uh, We teased the space snail in Mm -hmm. the trailer at the end, (laughs) which has been a thing in the community long before I even worked on this team. So... Uh, it was a joke by the community about space snails, and yeah, space snails are coming to the game. It's My daughter happening. loved that last scene. She's like, "What is that oh, snail?" That's so, <laughs> so cute. Um, and I can say I'm working. I've been. That's one thing I have been working my heart out on. Um, is the switch port is, or? Well, that and this some stuff for snails. Nice. Like, I'm the entire design team is taking different pieces of the snail snail stuff. It's not. Uh, a light amount of work. So we've been doing that. And yeah, I've been doing a lot with the switch because I'm the design rep for the switch. Oh, nice. So not that that means a whole lot more than I sit in a lot of meetings and just represent design in those meetings. Um, because bringing things to the switch, it's a lot less of changing the design because we're keeping the game 
the game, it's very technical getting it to run on the Switch, to be honest. Yeah, do you have um, to... We'll... Does the power of the Switch impact that process a lot? Yeah, I mean, lot, I mean, like uh, a lot I mean yeah. I mean, there's a lot of optimizations and uh, things that have to be done to make it to make it run well. Um, I don't think we're compromising the visual look of the game. Um, we even put a trailer out. There's this launch trailer. Uh, there's the tease that Nintendo did inside the, the their sizzle reel segment, and then we put up like a two minute, three minute thing that was just like, "Hey, here is gameplay captured on the Switch." Oh yeah, we watched it today twice. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the game looks like on the Switch. It looks nice. Uh, yeah, there's there's compromises on certain things sure, of sure. Um, pop in a little bit more because we can't show trees and stuff to the horizon. Um, just can't. I guess there's polygon counts you. The GPU of the Switch can only do so much. Yeah. So there's things that we just have to take into consideration. But I think we've spent a lot of effort keeping that thing um, at the bar we're happy with. Because I don't, we wouldn't release it if we're not happy with it. Yeah. So we've been working hard. We've been working, just keep it going, keep it there. Um, trying to think of other things about it. Um, it doesn't support touchscreen. Shocking. I don't see how that would even work. Um, I'm not sure does. exactly what that would add either. No, um, it would be no. We just we cut that pretty early. That was a design decision. Like, don't do that. We're yeah. not. We're not. You need to. You need to use uh, Pro Controller or Dual Joy Cons. Um, it's not a single Joy Con game either. Um, trying to think of other things. Not a whole lot more. I mean, it's just been a lot of technical work getting it there more than anything. Um, what was the? What was it like? Uh, I don't know, hearing the reaction to this coming to Switch. That's for been the, great. The team. the team is so happy that we could actually talk about it finally. Yeah. With everybody. And our community has been uh, so excited for it now. Um, honestly, they're excited for the Switch, but our, the community is super excited for the space now. Like, <laughs> I, I would say that if you, you had them together, I think there's like 40% excitement for the Switch, 60% excitement that snails are coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's just our community. They, we have a great community. They're pretty awesome. Um, they get very, more excited about the little little things like that than just it being on another platform. Right, because the people Jimbo, in the community already play the game. Yeah, but the, most of the community is like, "Yep, pick it up. We'll pick it up on Switch day one." So, um, we don't. There isn't going to be cross saves. Mm. That is one thing. Like the saves on Switch are just not compatible with other platforms. Um, not shocking because. Again, technical changes behind the scenes. Like, uh, I, I have done this in my test testing. I have loaded a PC save onto the Switch. Don't recommend it. Was not was not a fun experience. <laughs> what, <laughs> it what? loaded, but it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> what? Because does... the frames generated differently. Not oh. in a bad way. It's just like the algorithm is slightly different because the processor in the Switch is different. Yeah. Um. Like, there's just these little things that change the math outcomes of a procedural generation, so just just doesn't work. They're not compatible. So. Right, like thinking about the math it takes to like launch a rocket, and if you like tweak one number, you fucking crash into the dirt. <laughs> I imagine yep. there's some similarities. Similarity, you tweak a number, and it's like look at where there wasn't a mountain. There is a mountain now yeah. in procedural generation, and so um, it's just how it goes. So that's not compatible. What does but what does the company like Supergiant do to make that compatible? Uh, a lot of work on okay. their end mm. scenes. I'm basically saying, hey, we are, we have to make go through a pretty significant process of making sure that all the math works exactly the same, no matter the processor, um, and which is insane. And, and, and yeah, they have a lot less of that than the engineer does. And then, yeah, that makes sense. Um, this is going to be a stupid question for you, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, th- for a save file to cross over, like let's say Hades, for example. It's not just a list saying you have these, uh, you know, things on your body, these um, these weapons. You're in this room with these enemies. Like it's not just like a list of attributes that you can just like. Actually, Hades might be that. Oh, okay. Because the save file probably because they they pre, I bet they pre-generate your entire run, every potential room yeah. for that right. entire. So the save file just needs to keep track of like here's the rooms, here's how they're connected, here's what. Uh, Boons are in each room. Boons and choices are in each room. So like, it's very deterministic. Probably on after they like generate it, they can just save it. Right. Out. Okay. And just like, it doesn't really. 
if a CPU loaded it different, it doesn't matter. Because it seems like, no, it's this room, this room, this is how they're connected. Uh, Ashenir actually does procedurally generate its terrain. Like, that's... there. It's a lot of triangles that yeah. make up plants. Like, and those those things have corners. So it's just a lot of data. Um, if you don't actually... And that's the thing, to make save files not small, and this is how, like, No Man's Sky works, you don't actually save the entire universe that you generate. You save the seed that generates it, and then you only save out into the save file what a player changes about that seed. Which is probably you take minimal. The, 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 yeah, the diff yeah. of the difference from base to what they have. Which, so you just track, like, oh, they've deformed this chunk of terrain. So we know that. That's they a lot to keep track here. of if they do a bunch of shit. Yeah, Damn. our save files are huge. Like, people in our community that have years old saves have saves that are, like, 50, 60 megs. Because um, they've just been doing tons of shit in their game. 50, 60 megs doesn't sound like a lot, though. Is it? Uh, it's for save game, yeah. It's a yeah. lot. Um, what do you think about like, the save games that I upload to fucking PS Plus or whatever, the, the PlayStation oh, Cloud? They're huge. Maybe. I mean, maybe I'm even underestimating how big these are yeah. from our community. But, yeah, it can get big depending on how many people have been doing in their games. Um but, uh, cool yeah, shit, I'm, man. I am so happy this is out and we got to talk about it. And holy hell, I can talk about it without the fear of Nintendo crushing us. Um, yeah, and if it wasn't obvious, we delayed our podcast because we just want to make sure that we didn't do shit, <laughs> say shit, nothing. And even, all, like, so I didn't even know the thing on Wednesday was happening until Friday before. Yeah. Our marketing guy knew about probably a week earlier but the email he had said he couldn't... It was unclear if he could even inform the rest of the team it was happening. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and then he was like, showed us the giant list of things once he could tell us of what Nintendo does not want you to do. Um, and I won't go into that because I don't want also want potential of Nintendo's ire. It's just like, yeah, Nintendo is super secretive and they will blow up relationships if you fuck up. Well, they did that so, with Netflix, right? The the yeah, Zelda thing they were doing. Like they killed that... their 10-year ten, ten plan. They're just like, nope. Yep. You leaked it. We're done. Yep. And uh, <laughs> System Error is not Netflix. So they would trivially be like, no, you're out of the you're out of the indie world. Don't talk to us. So uh, we were just asked very kindly by comms and marketing to just be very chill online until this went up. Like, maybe don't even do anything on... Um, don't, don't make it like seem tweets. like you've disappeared, because everyone will figure it out if everyone's gone. <laughs> but but just uh, be very careful about what you... Because secrecy is key. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I'm so excited for you and your team. You're on a fucking so Nintendo excited. console, or you will be. I am! It's, um, like, a wow. I was weepy uh, that day. I was weepy that day, and I was like, this isn't even me. <laughs> it's so cool to think that I'm going to be on a, a game that I've directly worked on is on going to be on a Nintendo console. Yeah. That means I, we've talked about this inside the company and there's definitely the, the age range uh, where there's a number of people at the company in the, like let's say the 35 plus range that like, this is so important to us. Yeah. Right. Like th it's a, it's a fulfillment of like a dream either you had directly or indirectly, you know, from growing up playing Nintendo yeah. games. Yep. And you're, and it's one of those things we didn't even realize until it was like really upon us of being like, oh wait, this really means a lot yeah. to us to yep. be putting a game out on a Nintendo uh, piece of Nintendo hardware, and to be featured in something like this by Nintendo, um, even if it's just the start of the sizzle reel. But uh, I do want to give like Nintendo, we the start of the sizzle reel, and then Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Japan, uh, Nintendo of Europe have all tweeted out our like big announcement trailer whole thing so it's not like they haven't also additionally marketed us outside of even the video so um they put our entire announcement trailer up on their youtube channel as well nice so very happy that nintendo is uh excited for what we're doing as well yeah what a great partnership what just fucking yeah amazing thanks for all the details that we didn't have yeah uh, I think most of that's available. We have a FAQ on our website about it. Um, I nope. should know what our... Exclusive. Exclusive here. Yeah. We learned two things. All those details about uh, Astroneer, thank you. And also you pointed out that triangles have points. Thank you. They do. 
<laughs> they do. Uh, uh, yeah, there was a... we... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a fact on our on our webpage that uh, or a blog that just talks about here. Here's info about the switch port that you may have, um, and we're willing to talk about right now. Yeah, for so. Sure. Well, we also learned earlier that apparently Shovel Knight's coming to Astroneer, so that's that's also a hot day. Yeah, that'd be great. I should <laughs> make that happen. Uh, so other parts of the sizzle reel were Slime Rancher coming, I think. Yep. Is it out, or is it coming? I think it was coming soon. I don't uh, think it was out. Oh, okay. But I don't um, um, The one I thought about in the sizzle reel for you was the the 100 days. Yeah, the winemaking the wine simulator. Making one? Yes. Yeah. I very much latched onto that. <laughs> like, <laughs> this sounds rad. I would like to make it's some on, wine. Is it on Steam? Is it? I don't know if it's out on Steam. Um, Coming this winter. But, but they were... I played the demo, or had the opportunity. I shouldn't say I played the demo. Uh, they had the demo on Steam at one point hmm. um, during one of the 2020 festival things that they were doing on Steam. Um, yeah, it's, it is totally out on Steam. And... Oh, okay. So, because this comes out in winter, so I could just play it on Steam. Okay. Yeah, you could just play it on Steam. Yeah. But I don't know. I like this. You know, that farming sim or whatever, but like... With alcohol, I like. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. No, it's, that's cool. And I've watched the official trailer. the The team making it is in wine country in Italy. Oh my god, perfect. That's where they're based. <laughs> they're like, we've grown up around wine. We're just gonna make a game about wine. Yes, thank you. We know what we're doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, that's the one I saw that it was like, that's you. That's okay. your game. Mm. Uh, I was interested in Curious Expedition, but that implies there was a one. I never, I don't think there I've was. ever heard of this. Kind of uh, like, a, like a, st- a storybook art style. It does. Um, I'm trying to think, it's it's they're roguelikes. Mm. Uh, if I remember right, it's the yeah, it's the dice rolling. The first one was had some dice rolling to it, like unique symbols, and you were like assigning different symbols on your rolls to combat and stuff. It was very very random roguelike type game like true roguelike if i remember right um yeah and it's got some like D D elements in terms of like choosing yeah. um what you're gonna say and yep yeah. yep that's cool looks cool at least i'm not sure when this is coming out um yeah it's on curious expeditions 2 is on steam right now oh okay yeah it's been out on steam for a bit and so yeah this is they're just coming to switch i think this is a type of game i'd probably want to play on switch more than steam mm-hmm. um it says available from Nintendo eShop. Does that mean it's out already? I think uh, in the trailer it says available from Nintendo eShop, but it doesn't say like soon or anything. Cool. Um, well, and so the rest of them kind of like list uh, coming in winter, coming in winter. That one just doesn't. So maybe it's already. Lumberjack. Lumberjack is next year. Lumberjack, where you're cutting stuff down and. Something. Yes, Curious Expeditions 2, uh, Expedition 2 is out oh, right now. Great. 20 bucks. Does, do you see a rating on that? T. Mm. blood use of alcohol and violence because yes i bet the combat is you fighting things yeah and i saw some of that in the trailer um but it seems less problematic with us than other for example yeah. oh man uh, i'll get there when we're talking about what we're playing <laughs> actually that's the last of it so why don't we move into what we're playing yeah um my daughter we do uh on once once a week on uh, saturday or sunday morning it's baby link day so she gets to choose a Zelda experience. Sometimes, usually, we're just watching Wind Waker, for, um, which is great. I love it. Um, if she ever listens to these podcasts when she's much older, I love those experiences with you. <laughs> um, but this time, she she had a Mifa amiibo in her bed that I found that morning. I was like, did you hey. sleep with this? <laughs> she's like, oh, what does that do in the game? I'm like, well, it usually drops like a treasure chest from the sky or whatever. Um, she's like, oh, can we do that? It's like, yeah, sure. Um, you know, we're not gonna really get a battle. We can, you know, drop some treasure chests on your head and you can open them up. Um, but instead she wanted to, instead of playing Breath of the Wild, she wanted to play Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. And I was like, oh, that whole thing is battling. But why don't we load it up and see what it does in the game? We don't have to battle. Um, and she's seen the whole movie. And there's no battling in the cutscenes, which is awesome. But she's seen the whole movie probably ten times by now. Um, like I didn't even need to finish the game to know the story, which is nice. Um, so I load up a new save file cause I thought I don't want to load up mine cause I'm in the middle of a battle or whatever. I should have done mine because then I could have used the amiibo cause the new save file loads you into like the tutorial mission basically around Hyrule yep. Castle. So there's just moblins yep. coming in. It's just like a huge battle. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fuck, uh, we're going to need to not battle. Um, so I don't really want to do that. 
which I was ready to like say that or turn it off or whatever. She took care of that. She decided that the Hyrule field, she said, looked shaggy and she needed to cut all the grass. So while everyone else is fighting, she's running around entire Hyrule field cutting all the grass. <laughs> she spends almost an hour just cutting the grass. And I said, uh, you only have an hour to play today. Are you sure this is how you want to spend your time? Yep. Because she's been dying to play Lego Worlds more. She's in love with that game. Um, okay. I was like, we could play that. She's like, no, I'm cutting the grass with Baby Link. I'm like, great, fine. It's like it's smooth now. They can have their battle. Um, so we played Hyrule Warriors, a game about only battling, and she managed to find the one thing she can do that wasn't battling without me even having to ask her. She was so fucking into it. It was hilarious. Um, so that was a fun experience. Um, and other than that, I I don't know if I t- had talked about playing Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh no. Yeah, I picked that up on Switch a while ago because um, I've heard a lot of good things about it as like a side scrolling beat 'em up. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I've only played a couple, maybe one, two levels um, so far, but it just it plays well. I don't know. It, it's an old game, so you probably played it, but it's a great art style. There's something about I not, like I've not played it. You're, you're, the story is like you're supposed to beat up this girl's seven boyfriends or whatever to. Oh, I know the yeah, I know the story. Okay, um, well, because so... it's a it's a comic and a movie. Right, exactly. But the so I guess the person who like Ramona, I guess is the girl. Yeah, Ramona, Ramona Flowers. Right. Yep. Okay. So then you, when you load up the game, you don't have to just play as Scott. You can play as Ramona. I was like, well, fuck this. I'm gonna play as Ramona yep. and have her beat up all the boyfriends or what the fuck ever, because um, I don't like that story idea even though i don't really know much about it other than that um so yeah it was it was fun i don't know it was it felt it, it seemed like it played nice um yeah god there's something else i played too and i am blanking on it but my main highlight was hyro warriors uh lawn mowing simulator <laughs> um and that's been my playtime okay uh for me it has been not shocking final fantasy 14 yeah you sent me another so much. text i did i photo. finished since the last time we talked i finished the first expansion heaven sword and that text i sent you that was like hey there's it's done it a couple more times to me of being like <laughs> but you know there's gonna be a lot of cutscenes happening here you may want to make sure you have time for this um i've had that twice since since that picture to you i love that um, warning man it's a great warning um, it's also really exciting whenever you do have the time and you're like, oh, hell yeah, I'm getting lots of story now. This is going to be great. I'm I'm ready. Just inject this right into my veins, please. Um, so I beat all the missions between the quests between the first expansion and the second expansion. So I'm into the second expansion now, Stormblood, which has been a blast so far. Um, I've talked to my wife about this as kind of like, I'm really enjoying the story and everything, but one thing I'm like, I think why this game is also really getting popular right now, like most Final Fantasies, if not all Final Fantasies, it is a very kind-hearted game. Like, this is not a game that revels in cynicism. Right. It is very much you, you are the warrior of light, and the people around you, you're trying to make the world better, but not in a way of, I'm going to just kill everybody that is bad you want to redeem everybody that's bad and the villain that's cool like is it redemption is a huge arc through this entire i'm 164 hours into it and redemption is this like this constant thing and then the it's redemption on one side and then it's like yeah there is loss in the game characters have big loss and it's treats loss of something of being like you will lose things loss happens Feel that, feel those emotions, feel that pain, but fill up one quote from it. Fill once you've gotten it all out, fill your heart up with the love and the memories of what you've lost. Um, and it just you hit these points, and I'm just like, right, this is a game that wants to show kindness to the world, not be cynical. And every chance it has to be cynical, it chooses the other direction. And I think that is what a lot of the world wants right now. Yeah, I was going to say that seems to be a reason why uh, people have gravitated towards Ted Lasso. And yeah. that makes sense while people are gravitating towards this, where it's, it provides that, like, God, I feel good after experiencing this piece of media as opposed to, like, yeah. feeling worse. Yeah. It wants to present characters who are 
innately kind to one another and want to be kind. And even, like I said, when you have villains that have done horrible, horrible things, the heroes in the story are less interested in destroying them and more interested in being like, they have done bad things, but we can help them and make them better. And you don't see a lot of stories about like redemption against like horrible villains and striving for that of being like, we fail if we cannot. Re- yeah. Usually it's like the conceit is like you defeat the boss, you defeat the bad yep. person, you kill them. And like Witcher two, I think at the end it was like, do you kill him or do you just not even battle? So you just let him walk away. But that's still not redemption. It's just like, yeah. you know, you make a different choice for yourself, I guess. Um, that's cool. That's a different way to do it. It is really cool. And I appreciate it so much. Um, and it's really just kind of hitting home towards the end of that first expansion and into the second one of being like, yeah, there's trials and tribulations and that will challenge people in this course of, of trying to do better for the world. And like, there are more people yet to save. So make the choices that save those people. Um, so it's, it's been great. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. I probably still, I'm into this expansion just Stormblood, and there's Endwalker after this. Not Endwalker. Shadowbringers. Endwalker's the one which I'm trying to make sure I'm done with all the story so I can just do that last one. Um, and, yeah, it's just, I've said it before, it's a slow burn of a, of a story, but it's all the payoffs are happening through that first expansion and where I'm at now. Just the events matter. And I've spent so much time with these characters, and they've taken so much time to push their arts that I actually am invested in all these characters and where they're going and invested about like how they're going to accomplish what they're trying to do. And like when they fail and when they triumph, it, it's great. It's good storytelling. Um, and it's storytelling at its own pace. It's like, we're not, this is clearly not a game. that's like, Oh, we're just going to make the most mainstream story we can. It's like, no, this is, this is final fantasy and they'll take their time and they'll do what they want to do. Um, and I love and I, it. It's like continuing. God, 15 yeah. came out. They're developing 16. 14 has been out for a long time before 15. Yeah. And it's just now, I mean, it's been hitting the stride for a while for people who've been playing, yeah, but it now has. it's like blowing the fuck up. Yep. Uh, and it deserves it playing as far as I am through this. Uh, yeah, it, it 100% de- deserves it. It is in so many ways, the anti wow. Even while back in the day when it was its peak, when I was raiding in it in 2010, 2011, um, this is just not that from its themes and emotional resonance. So it's pretty cool. It's really nice that, uh, I don't know, not, different developers are doing it and there's different ways to like make games or whatever, but like to have the medium tell such compelling stories that the way that that story is being played out, I don't it seems unlikely that it could be portrayed in other media, you know, especially, I mean, just a length alone, but also playing length. the characters and having those little yeah. bits of story along the way. Yeah. I, that's a key part. Um, the closest, honestly, that could come to would be a very long novel series. Um, but I will say that one of the things I did compare it to was thinking through it was game of Thrones in some way, cause there's a lot of politics in 14 that you get to, but again, it's not cynical like Game of Thrones. Right. It's just not. And it doesn't want to be that grim, dark, cynical view of the world. Um, which I've thought now, I'm like, man, if the next Game of Thrones book come out comes out, I don't even know if I care. I don't know if I'm in a place where I want to deal with that. Like, it's so fucking dark all the time. I don't know if I'm ready I I'm in a mental place anymore for that. Like I, I, Maybe in a weird way, the game, those books have taken so long to come out. Because when they first were coming out, that's what people were really wanting. That was the very trend, or that early 2000s period. They'd come out for a bit. But like really, fantasy of that early 2000s, 10s, has been very focused on grimdark, um, cynical writing. I feel like with Game of Thrones, like I totally agree with you, that's that's the case. But there are, for me, so many like veins of redemption for the bad people basically that it like puts like slivers of brightness through that story um like i'm thinking specifically of like jamie lannister Um, if they redeem well let's does it end like the tv show because of that his thing ends that then i'm just like god you just undercut that entire thing 
I don't I don't think it does. But even if it does, like the journey like has been like uplifting in a lot of those cases um, that I've found like myself just very joyous about those things uh, throughout that series. And I have no idea how that's going to land, you know, in the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm looking. Cause, I'm cause looking. I guess that's the thing. The show it felt to me felt in, ended pretty cynical overall. Oh fuck yeah! No, the show. Fuck the show. The Pete. That show fucking sucks. Um, for. But then they're like, well, Martin told us this is how he's ending it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but th- I guess that's kind of what I'm saying is like, even if they are like, and that arc, if you just look at the plot points, yeah, dark, cynical view of fucking humanity. But the way that he tells the story with most of um, there are there are bright moments that did not come across in the show. You know, like Danny for what the fuck? Oh, no, they um, just up that character beyond belief fuck. at the end. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that that just colors everything, right? You look back, you're like, oh, it was all like that. It wasn't, and it certainly is not in the book. That's true. The um, book is, the show reveled in it a lot. Oh God, it did absolutely to the point, you know. And there's, you, it's hard to have nuance in such a short, you know, arc. Yeah. You know, ten ten episodes, an hour each. Um, but they could have fucking tried harder, and they just phoned that shit in. Just give it off to Brian Cor- yeah. Brian Cogman. You're done. Fine. Like leave. Let someone else who cares about it do it. But no, they just ground it into dust. Yeah. Uh, one of uh, our favorite topics to return to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but there's definitely a thing where I, no people aren't interested right now. Like, typically, kind of like the what I see as like best-selling fantasy and sci-fi right now. It's not not really as cynical anymore. Um, in general. Yeah, I'm thinking least, of um I, a murder the Murderbot series where there's like a. There is certainly cynicism, but it is it is dulled maybe by like intense like optimism and yeah. some joy, and it's like yeah, I almost see that like embodied in that just storyline where it's just yep. wavering on the knife edge and is leaning toward no, we're gonna be you know <laughs> we're gonna kind of poke it, fun at the cynicism. Yeah, kind of, and I think that you see a lot more of that of being like we can make the choice to be like full on cyn- cynical or cynicism dark, and they go. No, actually, we're not going to do that. Like, there is, there's another path to be taken. The Expanse series mm-hmm, right. has been that way. That is very, it's political. It has bad things that happen, but the main characters are focused on optimism. Like, the main character Holden through those entire books, like he gets sh- people throwing shit at him because he's just so optimistic and puts so much hope that things can be better, and he will do what he can to make it better. Um, and so I just see a lot more of that. Again, I just think it, these things go through the zeitgeist in cycles. Um, yeah, and when you have a series, uh, either like Final Fantasy fourteen or Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is longer, obviously. Yeah. But if you have a series that runs that fucking long, trends changed, change, yeah. interests change, desires change, and it's hard to play to them. Uh, and yeah. Martin doesn't. He just does. He writes what he wants. If uh, he writes, I'm not even sure. <laughs> Or touche, man, touche. Yeah. I mean, does he? <laughs> he says he does, man. I does it matter? Know. Really? It, do- it doesn't matter. It's been fucking ten years, man. Ten fucking years. <laughs> My favorite book series of all time. And if I give a, f- I, I, don't... I just, you know, five years ago I was ready to take a day off, or you know, two days off or whatever from work to just fucking hold myself up in a fucking mountain, you know, Airbnb somewhere and just read the shit out of it. Now I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll read it when it comes out. Yeah, because at this point I'm just I don't, I don't even know, but it's crazy to think it's been that long. Um, and the the other thing that I I played very briefly, um, uh, I did have a friend uh, at Blizzard who sent me a key for the the thing this weekend, so I installed Diablo 2 Resurrected to see what it was. It's Diablo 2. Color me shocked. So, which probably puts a little bit more of a damper on me even getting it to begin with right now, because <laughs> you're like. It's pretty, but it is literally Diablo 2. No changes beyond, like, some small quality of life. So, yeah, that's probably what fans want. They want that experience. It kind of is, slightly. but I'm also like, okay. Like, I didn't come away with it being like, oh my god, it's Diablo 2. Like, yes, I played Diablo 2 a lot. I love Diablo 2. This is a pretty version of Diablo 2. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't ask for it. They just sent me a key. So I was like, fine. Um, yeah, my friend sent me... Um information about getting involved and i was like i think i sent you the text um yeah very happy to hear that thanks for thinking of me i'm declining to 
play yeah. or purchase. So Diablo I'll, two. Yeah, I'll see what it see what it felt like, and that's my report. It's Diablo two. Yeah, Blizzard Blizzard can get fucked right now, man. And I'm glad that um, people on the ground are reporting um, some positive progress. But as long as Kodak and Townsend are there, they're not leaving. I know they're not. And... Understand that. Like, you want to make that happen? Figure out some way to get COD and King to stop making money. Yeah, right. And... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait the the stock price tanks and then buy it all, and then I'll be the majority shareholder, and then yep. I will say, you fucks are fired. <laughs> this is my gonna... fantasy. <laughs> That's the wish. I just don't. That's the problem. Is is COD is not the people that buy COD at the numbers that they sell it at probably have no clue any of the stuff was happening. No, absolutely. Even I think even just Blizzard games like people who are excited about uh, Diablo two. Do they know that this happened? I mean, there was some blips on mainstream media, but I I think you know people who listen to this or listen to gaming podcasts are like you know the hardcore audience in the top you know two to five percent or what. Yeah. We know, and we make choices. You know. That I know, I know my choice to not buy Diablo 2 or any other Blizzard game moving forward until those fucks are gone doesn't impact shit. But morally, I can't. I cannot touch it. I'm glad there's positive change. I'm hoping that that continues for the people I know who work there. Because, God, what a shitty fucking... It is. Yeah. The other person I worked there was... We had a decent conversation about, like, best ways of supporting. And, yeah, they were... I said in the text, they were very much paraphrasing the being like, it doesn't matter if you buy or not buy a Blizzard game. Yep. Like, that will have zero impact on uh, the people in charge of Activision Blizzard. Right. The people in charge of Blizzard itself, there's already been a number of people that have left quietly and or stepped down. Yep. So, uh, the hope is there will be change there, but yep. Activision Blizzard side, I, I don't know. Like, they just continue making cod without issue year over year and that's a thing people buy yeah and that's you know that's fine people enjoy that experience and i don't begrudge them for that you know people who don't know shit about what's happening that i just you know it's just it's fucking sad that it's going to take the stock price being driven into the earth for anything to change on that side save that nothing's going to happen where late stage capitalism it is. I know. We've been here for a while, and it fucking sucks. But <laughs> what does Kodak? What does Kodak bring, or fucking Fran Townsend bring to Activision that two other bumble fucks in charge couldn't also do? It seems like it's just a like a runaway train of cash. You know, just make COD every year. King does their fucking mobile games that they stole from fucking cool people, um, and then yeah, I don't know. Just I'm don't do anything. Wrong. I mean, uh, Kodak's found a way to make print money, basically with with COD and King, and all investors care about is that money and their forecast. I guess that's um, my question, though. Has he? Or Yeah, he's been in charge for... I mean... In he's been in charge since 2008 as a CEO. I know that. But, but no, he's been at Activision long before... He saved Activision from bankruptcy back in the day. Like, um, it's just a super long thing. I'm like, does he, does he matter? I don't know. That's my question. Does any CEO matter? Also my question. <laughs> in the long run? But they're the ones that shareholders listen to. So uh, he, um, I mean, who who can fire the CEO? Shareholders and board? Yeah, the board. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I don't think in this stage of capitalism and things caring, we've gotten to a point that as long as the company is continuing to make money, he will be in charge and that stock price stays up. That's totally I correct. No matter if you buy the game or not. And it's not, yeah, and that's the thing, I'm like, I don't ever buy COD or any of these other games, so I've already never been giving you money <laughs> in that way. And right. when was the last time I bought a Blizzard game? I bought it's a Blizzard a game month. three months ago. <laughs> really? I, yeah, I bought fucking Overwatch again for PS4 oh. so I could play with my friend, which I uninstalled I bought, this I never, week. I never played, bought Overwatch. I don't own Overwatch anywhere. I don't, I guess Diablo 3 on Switch was the last time I bought a Blizzard thing. Yeah, right. That's it. Because I don't play Overwatch, and they haven't put anything else out. I just... I don't... Wow. Yeah, right. It's well, crazy. I, thing. I mean, like, I'm like, I'm a, I've been so out of this for so long that maybe I'm like, it's not even a big deal about for not buying Blizzard, because I just didn't do it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not going to buy your games I never bought. Like, I might... You know, obviously my family, I can't control them. My mom and my brother fucking play WoW every day. 
Um, you should play Final Fantasy. It's better. Um, has her has her guild <gasps> left? Dude, that's how I'm gonna do it. Like, hey, there's a better game. You want to check it out? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just wondering. I'm like, with so many people ditching WoW and unhappy with it. I'm, and especially like, just I'm sure she's part of a guild in general yes, and has friends there. That I'm just like, have 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 any of them jump ship to 14? It's a good question because I feel like it's pretty consistent that people are jumping ship to 14. Yeah. When I'm talking to my mother again, I'll. Uh, oh geez, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> um it's for me overwatch just bought it um bought it several times i bought diablo 3 several times um recently and i would obviously buy diablo 4 and i fucking bought tickets to blizzcon um so i've given them money you oh know? yeah i've got years so it's not nothing but it's not very significant long run but at least, you know. And I guess it's not, and the key part, it's not significant for Activision Blizzard, as it's, we've found out. No, uh, even Blizzard's not, act, not significant for them. Which is so weird to say, but it's true. It's the like, third God. third highest, you know, money-making thing for them after Activision, and then King, and then Blizzard. And Blizzard, that rock has been sinking for a while, because of WoW. And... Yeah, because they were up with WoW for so long. Right, um, and they don't put out games very quickly. No. But I w- I'm a person who, I mean, I fucking definitely was going to buy Diablo 2 Resurrected because we've been talking about that for as yeah. long as this podcast has been a thing. Um, and then Diablo 4, obviously, and also Overwatch 2 because I enjoy those games. And that's not happening until my line in the sand. And I know there's a lot of things happening. That's cool. But it's those three names, Brack, Townsend, and Kodak. And oh, I got Brack. Yep, got one of three. Um, so I'm, you know, it's easier for me to stick to my guns because I don't have a ton of time to play games right now in- I can relive Diablo 2 Resurrect if that yeah, that's, comes. And even this, getting the key and playing it, was, did make me be like, okay, there's nothing. It's interesting in how you're like, oh yeah, technically I already own this game. Not right. as pretty, yep. but I own this game. Yep. I could just play it again if I want. Like, uh, and that's fine. So, yeah, I don't know. I got the key, but it definitely put it to a point of being like, it's cool. I got Final Fantasy to, to play. Yeah. And I don't know anything else. And, uh... Blizzard, you can f- figure your shit out. Um, quickly, please. I mean, there's, you know... It's not going to be quickly. It's going to be years. Well, at least I'll people be have been leaving. I mean, McCree and a couple other people left recently. Yeah, I mean, people will leave, but it'll be years before you see any kind of... Uh, for it, things to really take effect, uh, see if there's change. You gotta see how this lawsuit plays out. Yeah. And that's probably gonna take years um, for you with Kodak and the executive board, like... That really just depends on how this lawsuit go- lawsuit goes and how public it is over the next couple of years. Yeah. If this is the only thing we hear about it ever, this last couple weeks ago, month ago now, and we never hear about this again, nothing's changing. Right. Like, and I guess that's possible. I mean, riots got the same lawsuit against that similar lawsuit against them, and I, it completely went under the radar that they actually got sued by the state of California, but they did. Same stuff, maybe not to the same extent, but the same same charges um, overall of unfair work environment, harassment. So I don't have a lot of hope that uh, people will remember this unless it actually goes to trial. And yeah, that's a long, think, long, long time. I assume that would at least be a year, year and a half before that. Um, so, and who knows, they'll, they might just settle it and be done with it. Um, I don't know. That's what. That's me being cynical on this whole system and being like, "Yep, someone will just get a slap on the wrist and move along." Yeah, I guess we should be proponents of the heroes of light redeeming Bobby Kotick and Fran Townsend, the torture apologist. I, I feel like they have enough money; they could redeem themselves. Oh, I feel like the more money you have, the less likely you are to redeem yourself. I know. Just, just go live on your super yacht. Yeah. That has its own. That has its own separate yacht. <laughs> Your yacht has a fucking yacht. Oh my god. I don't know if that's Kodak. There's a the meme going around a long time ago. It, w- it really was a giant yacht that had a little door that had a docked another smaller yacht. Blech. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know, man. I I want I want things to be better. Yeah. Um, agreed. But I am I am happy working for my small little company. Um and not at any of these big giant corporations anymore. Yep. Cuz that's what brings me happiness. <laughs> not working for giant tech companies. Yep. That have no fucking soul. Yeah, they don't. Well, on that happy note, 
Uh, thanks for joining us for episode 302, where we spent a lot of time talking about really cool details about Astroneer coming to Switch. Anthony said, uh, looking forward to that, hopefully in January of 2022, among many other 2022. Um, if you like our podcast, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. Um, and stay tuned for our uh, spinoff podcast, We Bitch About Game of Thrones. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I still, I'm we're still not over it. No, nah, I not never will be. Show. Never will be. Yeah. Well, I'm about to go on another rant, so I'm going to stop there. Thanks for listening, okay. folks, and we'll see you again next week. Later, everyone.